Hi, B. Is it just us? Hi, guy. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's just us. I was waiting. I'm trying to get to these others. Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm seeing on the invite. Let me forget everyone. Sorry, I've got it. Let me share the link. Tower. Lucy, have you received my email from your end? Sending the link. Let me check. Uh, no. Let me refresh. No, I haven't gotten it. Okay, especially next to the net on your side.
Do you have another way to communicate with him? Sorry? Do you have another way to communicate with him? Just to send the link. Because the link is where we all registered. Mm. Wait, um, are you asking if I have a different way aside from the email? Yeah. No, I don't. Uh, there's a way. Okay, the net is going really slow on my end. Could you please share this into the into the email thread for the meeting invite? Sure. <clears throat> Thanks. And the conversation is not moving. As you do that, let me try and share that. Uh, let's see if it will load clearly on your end that pre pre webinar video and we really hope it won't be affected showing clearly on your end Amma it's it's clear Amma it's clear Amma it's clear yeah it's clear I thought that yeah. didn't affect the the net. Okay, so that's the net is slow there because mine is also yeah. slow. It's taking so long for anything I'm trying, to load. Because the draft, the draft is still there for me sending them to say, here is the link, join us. Okay, guys, <laughs> it's nine minutes ago, <laughs> and it's still here. Yes. No, but I'm happy the, the video is playing just fine. Yeah. You have to invest the major parts. I think mine has sent. It's yeah. gone through. Yeah. Yes, yes, I've gotten it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yay. Sure. Hey, I hope they show up. <laughs> yeah. oh but at least it won't, uh, it's not much to do. I'll just play the video for those 10 minutes before start time. If I see the participants at Kidogo, I'll play for like two or three more minutes mm -hmm. and then over to, to Nene, to Kamaro.
Okay. Just the intro. Mudoni mm. then starts. They, they, mm. but, but they need to discuss amongst themselves how they'll do. Will they, will they do the Q and A at the end of the session? Ama, they'll take in questions as we go on. Yeah. No, I don't know. What are you They do. Uh, yeah. I love. Uh, let's see if he responds. Would it be weird when it issues? I put our whatever. Our um, like the slide like that I did last time. It has both logos, Cindy. It has both logos. It's just thank you for attending the webinar, but it has our information, not Wow's information. And it's the webinar, gosh, what do we do? <laughs> what if we put then both? We put both as in... What information did it have? Remind me, is it the website? Nini? It's uh, thank you for attending our webinar. Connect with us and then our phone numbers, email, like it will uh, main take ongoing. Um, I, I think we can just show if, if it's a problem. <laughs> we take every opportunity. <laughs> well, we have to allow. Yeah. Wait, let me switch the the logos. I remember for the artwork, the logo is above and ours is below ours. Is then as for us, it's vice versa. Uh, This is how it will look like. This hotel put. Okay. Mm. They'll probably not notice. Yeah. Because I put Cause... this when everyone is already leaving. I'm like, I just need something to be there for like 10 seconds and then I, I yeah. shut down everything. Yeah. Mommy, it's okay. Check her too. Kai, Check when her. are these people coming? <laughs> we need to join, boy. So that they know. We won't be able to do anything once we start rolling. Yeah. Oh, yay. Um, hi. Hi, Kamaru. Hi, Kamaru. So we were both on the Zoom call, or rather on the Microsoft Teams. Ah, so um, let me just let Mudoni know that we're on uh, on Zoom.
Uh, she should be joining shortly. So,
Hi, Mudoni. Thanks for joining. Hi. I'm Vanessa, a digital marketing officer at ADN Line. Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you too. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so uh, I'll just kick off by just um, starting on how I'll kick off the webinar 10 minutes to the start time. So mm -hmm. I'd like to demonstrate that by sharing. I'll be sharing a video, kind of like an intro to you, the speaker and the moderator to be playing as guys are slowly trickling in. And um, in the case that at the start time, the numbers are a bit low, I'll continue to play it for about three more minutes. And then the moment I stop, then I'll hand over to Kamaru. As in, the moment it stops, Kamaru will be the one to speak and then he'll do his intro, icebreaker and all, and then over to you. Let me quickly share the video. Okay. So after I stop it, then come Kamara will come in and do the necessary. And I wanted to ask if uh, you'll be having the q and A. I I don't know if you discussed this with Kamaru, if you'll be having the Q&A after your session or you'll be taking in questions as they come in through the chat. Um, we hadn't discussed it, but I would, I want the session to be as interactive as possible. So questions um, are welcome during the session. Ah, awesome, awesome. Um, otherwise, that's pretty much it from my end, yeah. I'll just be doing the back end stuff. I had a question. Will I be able to share my screen? Is that okay? Yes, yes, you'll be able to share your screen. Can I try now just so that yeah. you tell me can see mm -hmm. the presentation? Yes, we can see it. Though in so, you haven't put it in, yes, it's in presentation mode now. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see everything. We should be okay. Yes, nice and clear. Okay, so yeah. All righty. That I just needed to be able to do that. There's nothing as bad as starting a session. You're like, yeah, I can't fix my <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> uh, Kamaru, anything? Any questions? Lucy? No, I think I'm um, all good and set. Ah, awesome. Awesome. Yes. Wait, I have one last question. How is the moderation working? So, will somebody from your end be seeing the questions as they come in and maybe prompt me? Uh, Kamaru, yes. could, yeah. I believe yeah. that, yeah, that will be me. I'm oh. the one who will be doing that. Okay, great. Alrighty. And then will is, will it be possible for me to ask the audience questions specifically, like directly? Yes. Because yes. if I'm hoping for interaction, I would like to be able to ask them questions. I had an icebreaker as well, very short one. Mm -hmm. um, just to be able to get some engagement as well, so that I'm not talking for an hour by, my, by myself. <laughs> Yes, yes, for sure. So that uh, they they'd be active all through the session uh, in the chat or the Q and A. So yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. Okay, perfect. That's it for me. Hi, everyone. Oh, uh, I'm in a disc I'm in a construction zone, so there might be a lot of noise in the background, and then I'm just coming off of COVID, so. I have really bad bouts of coughing. I'm really hoping they don't happen during the session. Um, but just in case, I'll, I'll have a little disclaimer at the beginning of the session, just so people don't get irritated with me posing to cough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, sure. Uh, oh, and hi, Mudoni. I'm Oirimo, Partnerships uh, Department. So, Partnership. yeah, I was just thinking, because uh, I don't really have a direct role or direct input. Uh, would it be too busy for me to still be on the panelist? Um, no, I think I should just stay, just in case of anything. I thought there would be too many, too many faces. Uh, faces uh, at the top of the screen. Yeah. No worries. I'd be right. able to to remove you. I'll also remove myself. Oh, okay. The ADMI. So it, so that is just Mudoni and Kamaru that are visible at all times. Ah, okay. Okay, so yeah. No worries. You don't have to be many like choir. No, solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy, I'll leave you up there. Me, I'll be looking my tent. I will change my name, Basi. <laughs> They'll be like, ah, this is the Lucy who was sending the email blast. Okay. <laughs> Do you know how many people we have so far? So far, like, we like, have registration. Sorry. Let's do a quick refresh. We're at 189 registrations. Jehovah, I should not have asked. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. That was, uh, that's all from me. So I can see you at four? Yes. Or oh, we could also, <laughs> everyone can uh, zima their um, microphones and videos. You uh -huh. can continue doing your you stuff. Stay? You can just okay. stay on. So when 10 minutes to, I'll click start webinar and then I'll start playing the the loop video, the loop intro video. Okay, that's fine. Sao, sao. Okay. Sao, sao. Okay. See you.
Okay. Um, I think we're good to kick start. Um, so good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's um to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Kamaru Ayaki. Um, the learning and coordinate learning and development coordinator at Wowzi. So I'll be the moderator for today's session, which will be on navigating the client um, landscape. So I'll just um, start with uh, intro a few introductions. So I'll start with introducing Wowzi and what Wowzi is about. Um, so Wowzi is an end-to-end -end platform uh, that connects social media users like yourselves to brands and vice versa, where we also connect grants to social media users like yourselves. So on Wowzi, you have the capacity to monetize your social media channels by receiving uh, paid campaigns uh, with several uh, brands. Then we also have ADMI, which is Africa Digital Media Institute, who offer courses in music production, film and TV production, animation, video games, graphic design, um, just to name a few. So if we have any curious um, and creative people on the call who would like, um, like to improve their skills or to start a career in the digital world, then ADMI is the place for you. So um, I think I'll, I'll allow the the speaker to introduce herself. Um, Doni, she'll introduce herself. Um, we work closely with her. She'll let you know what she does. Uh, but I think with that, she also has an icebreaker for you. Um, so I believe with that, we'll be good to start. So just some, some, some rules for the webinar. Um, kindly keep your audio off uh, and let the speaker do her thing. Then also, uh, we'd like this to be an interactive uh, session. So if you have any questions, kindly direct them to me on the chat box or take note of the question, and then I'll be able to relay the question to the speaker. So kindly, let's have our audio off. Um, then if you have any question, uh, direct them to me, Kamaro. You can send me a chat box, then I'll be able to uh, direct them to the speaker. So yeah, those are just a few rules. And I think uh, with no further ado, um, I'll introduce or I'll let our speaker of the day take it over after that. Uh, hi, Mudoni. Uh, you're still on. Okay. Hi. Yes. We've done a thing for, can you hear me? Can you hear me? We're back in 2020. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. My name is Mudoni and I am a digital, um, I'm a talent manager to digital content creators, but I also have wear a few other hats. I am a marketing consultant as well as a brand and positioning specialist. Now, I wanted to start off the session with a little icebreaker. If you'll allow me to share my screen, please. There we go. So, um, did I just start you guys off at the end of the presentation? Okay, fix it. Um, so first, thank you very much, Wowzi and ADMI for trusting me with this task. Um, it's been a while since I spoke uh, to, I speak to one-on-one -on -one to my clients, basically. <laughs> I haven't done this in a long time, so this this should be fun. I would like to ask you, please, to keep the session engaging, ask questions through Kamaru, of course. Um, I don't want to be the only one talking for the next hour. That will be very, very boring for all of us. So if you have any questions, if you have any anything you think would be important to add that I have left out, please feel free to share as we go along. So first off, I want us to play a little icebreaker. And this is the PG version of Never Have I Ever. I know you guys know all the versions, but this is the corporate version of Never Have I Ever. So I'll ask everybody to put, I know I can't see everyone, but Aki, please, 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 just put your hand up like this. Um, I'll give you a minute. Everybody put your hand up. If you want to put your screen on so I can see you, it's, that would be great. But everybody put your hand up. 
So I'll ask you a series of questions. And if you answer yes to any of those questions, I'd like you to put a finger down and then I'll tell you why at the end, right? We together? Right. Never have I ever Googled myself. Y'all know you have. Creators, come on, I know. <laughs> There's no way we don't Google. We all want to know what everybody, what, how, how much do they know about me? Never have I ever Googled myself, okay? The second one is, never have I ever written a list of clients I would like to engage, but then just left it as a list. Never pursued it past that list. Even if it's just three clients, you did not contact them, you didn't press play, nothing, yeah? Third question, never have I ever worked on a project I thought was dope, but that project has never seen the light of day. Yes? Fourth question, never have I ever engaged a client, had a sex, successful, the Kikuyu is coming through, a successful campaign, but then not followed up once the campaign was done. Obviously, I'm very good at follow up. You, Kamaru, don't put your finger down there. That's a lie. Put it back up. And the fifth question, never have I ever worked accidentally in parentheses, accidentally for free because I did not ask the appropriate questions of a client before I said yes to a campaign. With me, even me, I'm guilty of that one. I'm, I'm guilty. Okay, so if you have more than three fingers down, if you have more than three fingers down, you are in the right place today. And I say that because a lot of the times creatives um, who I think are the most phenomenal people on the face of the earth, because I work with you every day, a lot of times creatives don't, the, the amount of effort you put into other people's work is not the same amount of effort you put in for you. So I'm very glad to see you taking that step here today to see how you can learn to better engage clients, how you can better learn to keep clients and what you can do to grow your brand and flourish in the creative space. So please comment. Let me know how many people had more than three fingers down. Just put your hands up or send me smileys, anything so that I know you're still here. and we can move on into the presentation. Now, I want this again to be as interactive as possible. So feel free to ask questions, feel free to engage, feel free to, to comment so that we can learn from each other, so that we can all um, have fun in this session. I'm generally a fun person. So I don't do things uh, the typical way. I will not be a teacher today. I want to sit with you guys and learn as well. I'll share my experience and you can share yours. So I want us to go through a little bit about what the creative landscape looks like right now for digital content creators or for creators as a whole, be it a photographer, filmmakers, musicians. Um, the landscape is absolutely fantastic. You have endless opportunities. You have endless um, um, tools available to you for free, which is was not possible for us back in the day when we started out in the creative space. So you should be very glad and privileged to have been, to be in an era where all these things are afforded to you. However, that does not negate the kinds of challenges that you find in this landscape. One of them being, how do you effectively engage your clients? And that's what we're going to discuss today. Now, one of the things I like to tell all my creatives is before you engage a client, you have to understand what that client needs, right? What that client needs at that specific time. Do they have a plan in place for what they're trying to actualize? And then once you know these things, it will be easier for you to align yourselves um, to those goals and see where what they need and what you do meet for a successful coll collaboration. <clears throat> I would like to apologize in advance. I am just coming off of an illness that means I'm coughing every 0 0.5 seconds. So please forgive me if I cough. I will try to keep it um, civil and ladylike, um, but bear with me. So let's talk about your brand. Um, one thing I know about creatives is you have very strong personal identities. 
Now, how do we turn those strong personal identities into strong brands? One of the things I like to tell my creatives is you can't expect anybody to invest in you if you're not investing in yourself. And one of the ways you invest in yourself is you're consistently learning, consistently growing, and you're not afraid to adapt. One, you can't, in, in the digital landscape, with everything we know about social media, <coughs> I apologize. With everything we know about social media, there is no way you survive this industry if you're not willing to adapt and if you're not willing to grow, right? And investing in yourself means you're doing both of these things. Now, let me ask you guys a question, yeah? What kinds of influencers do you think were perfect for brand engagement? And if you look at them and the brand that, that engaged them, it just, it worked. It was the right, it was the right brand. Which ones, please feel free. You can, Kamaru, can I allow somebody to unmute and say something? Um, I, I, let me, I think it should be possible. Mm. Um, what brands, anyone? I, I know I can't see all of you, so I can't call you out. You guys are so lucky. My mother is a teacher, so I would have been those guys for, yes, Kamaru, you really can't see you, but. Do you have any content creators that you know of that have been perfect for a brand engagement? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, let me go first. So, okay, I'm seeing some messages coming through. Joy Kendi and Tankari, yes. That's actually a very very fitting um, partnership, yes. Anyone else? I have some biases because I have creators on my docket. So Victor Peace and Samsung, yes, fantastic. Yes. Kate and Nice and Lovely, nice, nice. Do you know why those people, Victor Peace and Fanny Chapalis, that, those were hilarious, yes, those were good. Do you know why you felt that those two weeks and Fanta, yes. Why why the brand felt like the why the, the the do you know why the collaboration worked and why it felt like it was a good fit? Because each of these creators you guys have mentioned knew what their unique selling proposition was. Let's just go through that list. Kate Actress, high high fashion, very polished. Um, a little bit uh, very personable, um, flawless. If you can allow me to say that. So it was it was not far fetched to see her joined with um, with nice and lovely, right? It was easy. It was a it was a believable collaboration. Beautiful skin, yes, fantastic. Those are the things I want you guys to start think of, thinking about. When you think about yourself as a brand, what do you see that is uniquely you, that is uniquely positioning you to then be able to align perfectly with a brand? Now, the reason this is, is, is important is because one, there's a bunch of us in this industry, right? We are many, like there's, there's a dime a dozen of influencers, right? Everybody doing something sp specific. What makes you stand out? So I want you to think about that as we go through this session. And the question I'd like to pose to you is why you? As you try to collaborate with brands, as you try to engage with brands, why should they be looking at you? What makes you um, what makes you stand out, right? One of the ways you can do this, um, one of the ways you can make sure that brands are constantly looking at you or constantly engaging with you is to show, uh, is to prepare a portfolio or a, te or a testimonial or um, a, uh, we call them EPKs in our uh, industry, a package, a press kit type of document that then shows other clients what you have done in the past. And what that does is it creates for you credibility and professionalism. Because once people, once other brands see that somebody, somebody else trusted you with their brand, it becomes easier for you to build on that, right? On that reputation. Yeah. 
So brands will only look at you if you give them a reason to look at you. So as we go through this session, please keep at the top of your mind, why you? Why are you uniquely positioned to partner with whatever brand your heart desires? Um, sorry, I think my presentation has hung. Okay, so now we move into the strategies that you can employ and I'll keep them as simple as possible. I'll let you guys in on what I use and how I position my clients, <coughs> how I position my clients in the digital space. Um, and the biggest one is social media. You cannot escape, escape it. One of the ways you know what clients are looking for content creators, what clients are looking for um, influencers to work with is on social media. And let me show you how. Now, you might see a nice and lovely campaign go up and think you can get into that one. Chances are that, that one was already sourced three or four months ago. But what that tells you is that there's an active plan for nice and lovely for that quarter, right? So if there's an active plan for nice and lovely for that quarter, the thing you need to do in that time is now begin to position yourself for future possibilities. And the way you do that is you engage with them online, you, um, engage with the influencers who are actually doing the work online, see what kind of work is being put out, see what kind of work you do and where do those two intersect and how can you best leverage whatever opportunities may come ahead for you. Prepare, prepare, prepare. You would rather have um, five proposals ready for potential work and then they don't come through. They not have any proposals ready and then work comes through and you're not ready, right? And we'll go through into how proposals um, work for you as well. Now, the reason I want you guys to use social media to connect connect with these brands is because once they see what work you can do, this is one other way you can showcase your portfolio, right? Once they see what, what work you can do, the chances of them uh, collaborating with you in the future or keeping you top of mind are very high. And the more you remain top of mind, the better it is for you as a brand because visibility, right? Visibility is fast. And then once visibility is there, you create believability. Once believability is there, then now you can convert, you can begin to monetize, right? You can't do one without the other. So you have to be visible, you have to be believable, and then you have to um, then now begin to convert that into, uh, you begin to monetize that. And then one, the last fun way to do um, any of these prospecting things is go for the event. I know a lot of times these events are invite only, but find out who who runs the mailing list. Who is, um, like for example, Kamaru might have a list here for a few events while he's doing for some clients. Ask Kamaru to be on that list, right? And network in those ways to make sure that you're always constantly seeking out opportunities to interact with these clients so that again, you remain visible and then you become believable, right? And industry events are not hard to come by. Um, when you're starting out, they might be difficult because you don't have the network aligned um, aligned in the beginning. But the more you network and the more, the more of them you come across, then the better your network grows, right? And once your network grows, even through your fellow creatives, once your network grows, then you, you have your foot in the door. Lastly, collaborate with other creatives. I know um, this one is normally a hard one because sometimes you feel like you're pulling all the weight or you're the one doing all the work, but you have to figure out your why. If your end game is to uh, attract a specific client and there's another collaborator who does something either similar to you or even different, but you feel would benefit, you would benefit from that collaboration, then go ahead and do it. Even if you're the one who, you're the one who shoots, you're the one who edits, you're the one who does all the work, figure out what your why is and where your why meets your opportunity. Once you do that, you have a better land, you have a better landing for figuring out, okay, nice and lovely. Sorry, I'm using like, nice and lovely, now it's stuck in my head. You're using, so nice and lovely, have a campaign with Kate. Do I have anyone in my circle, in my circles with Kate? Is there an event? Can I go? Um, does Modoni have a connect? Can she get me in the door for La Roche or for, you know what I mean? So once we begin to attend, 
these events, network, workshops as well. Be visible, stay visible. As a digital content creator, you cannot be behind the behind the scenes. Your your biggest portfolio, your your, your biggest marketing um product. So you have to want to use that consistently, right? So let's move into now crafting compelling proposals. Now I know um we have a very interesting relationship with proposals because a lot of the times you feel like you'll do a proposal and then it will be usurped and used for something else or by somebody else. But let me tell you something one of my bosses told me very many years ago, there is no new idea. There's no new idea that exists in the world. Nothing is new. You might have a spin, you might have um, a, you know, a unique a small unique perspective of how you want to do something differently, but there's no, there's really no new idea, right? So with that in mind, don't be afraid to knock on doors. Don't be afraid to try because the more you do it, the more I always tell my creators, you can only get one of two answers. Yes or no. Yeah. And the possibility of you getting yeses increases exponentially by how much you ask. So if you only ask once and you get a no, then you stop, then that is the end of the road for you. But if you consistently keep asking, if you consistently keep pitching, keep proposing, then you have a chance. And <clears throat> one of the things I'd like to highlight for you today is that proposals do not have to be hard and they do not have to be long. It doesn't have to be a 30 page document. It can be a five pager straight to the point that tells your client exactly who you are, what you do, and why you, and that's it, right? But one of the things you need to remember is, before you write a proposal to a client, find out what are their objectives for this particular campaign that you're trying to pitch for. What are their objectives? What does the client want to attain? Who is the audience? Who is the client speaking to? Because if the client is not speaking to the same audience you have, then you're mismatched, right? So you have to figure out who is the client trying to speak to and are you aligned with that client, uh, with that audience? And then what are the project requirements and, and is that scope within something you can handle? For example, if you're a one-man show and they're looking for a 30-day 30, 30 shoot um, in Mount Kilimanjaro with um, drones and airplanes and helicopters, sometimes you read the brief and you're like, I want, but it's not me, right? If you can rally, great, but it's important to understand what the requirements are before you pitch for a project. <coughs> one way to have, uh, one thing I like to do is I normally have one um, one solid pitch, right, for my creators that I then use to, um, to actualize work from a client. Let me explain how we do that. So for example, if I am, so I currently manage a few content creators, Kit Carrier, Stephanie, uh, Fitness by Stephanie, Wix Mankuda, um, Maureen Bandai, just to name a few. And one of the things we, I consistently do for them is I have a document that has all their strengths on that document, right? Everything they've ever done, everything they're capable of doing. And then specific templates are then you inserted to um, align with whatever uh, objectives are specific to that campaign. So that means you save on time, right? You save on time and you, you, you work more efficiently because you can do more of these as opposed to having, trying to craft a proposal every week for specific land. Have a template that you work with that then has all your information, who you are, what you do, why you, who your audience is, what your reach is. And then now, move into what you can do for the client in the last two slides. Again, I said, a proposal doesn't have to be long, right? Keep it short and concise. And use, you see like the way my proposal has many pictures and colors and, right? Use that to keep your audience, to keep your client compelled to read your proposal. Because Aki, if you just send a 20 word, 20 page document that then just has text, 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 even you, when the when when you were in school and the lecturer put that thing up on the on the projector, you're like, I'm going to to me two notes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So use visuals, use samples of your previous work, 
showcase how you're different and how you're unique, highlight your skills and your expertise, and use that to then form the bulk of the proposal. And then now the last slides are what form the specifics for why you for the campaign or for the project, right? Now I want to put one of you on the spot. I don't know whether I can do that because um, I don't I can't see everyone who's here. Let me just go through the list. Um so I would like to ask, I think I saw you here, Stephanie. Um if you would please unmute your mic. Um, sorry to put you on the spot. This is one of my creators. Um, I've worked with her for the last three years. Stephanie, can you hear me? Um, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, thank I you. am multitasking, but I'm here. Yes. Thank you. So I'd like you to give us a two-minute yeah. elevator for who's Fitness by Stephanie is, mm -hmm. um, and and why you? Just two minutes. A quick elevator pitch. Right, I know we've my worked... name is. So let's go. All right, my name is Stephanie Maura, and I am a personal trainer and fitness coach, and I inspire women to live the healthiest life they can by incorporating simple daily habits that improve their health and well-being. I do this by the online training, uh, coaching programs that are group or individual, and I also hold walk and talks and other fitness events, indoors and outdoors. And I'm a great empath, so I can relate to all my clients um, and help them achieve their goals. Thank you, Stephanie. Now, let me tell you what that does for you. Every time you are in a space with a decision maker, right or some or like Kamaru from Wowzy he doesn't have an hour to listen to you or to go through how much work you've done or how well you've done it you literally have two minutes of his attention to sell yourself so one of the important things over and above having a written proposal already that you can go to and refer to quick fast one of the other things you need to craft and learn to do for yourself is how to do a two minute elevator pitch as to who you are and why you. <laughs> now for this purpose, Stephanie was basically just telling us what she does and how she does it. Had she been trying to convert a client, the last part of that conversation would have been specific to that client, right? For example, if she's speaking to UAP and they want to do a wellness, <laughs> Excuse me. And they want to do a wellness package for their clients. The last part of her elevator pitch would be why her and why she would be perfect for UAP, right? So those are the things I want you guys to start thinking about. How do I make sure in the two minutes I have with whoever is a decision maker in whichever space I'm in, networking or at a workshop or at an event, how do I make sure those two minutes mean something, right? Are we together? Do you have any questions until there? I feel like I've been talking since 1977. Any questions? No? Do I keep going? Kamari, do we have any questions? Uh, not that I can see. And then um, if anyone wants to talk, just raise your hand. I uh, will give you an opportunity to ask the question. But from the chat box, I can see them saying we are together. Great. Okay, so let's move into the how. So we have proposals, you have your ele elevator pitch, and now we're moving into how do you actively engage um, these clients? One of the things to do is you keep your ear to the ground. That's what I call active listening. Keep your ear to the ground at all time. You might not catch all the campaigns, but I can guarantee you for every three you miss, you find another 10, right? Um, and what this also means for you is you're constantly, um, you're constantly allowing yourself 
to be in spaces where these decisions are being made and these conversations are being had so that then if a campaign is suited to you, you're able to take advantage of that opportunity, right? So ask Kamaru all the questions you have. What campaigns are coming? Who has asked you to pitch? Um, how can I better position myself? Those questions are important for you to start asking the people in your network who are influential in making these decisions. And I'm going to refer a lot to Kamaru because Wowzi does this effortlessly because they, they, have, they have the network and they have the manpower necessary to be able to keep engaged with clients. You might not. So your connect to that world then becomes Kamaru or Wowzi directly. Are we together? Now, transparency and communication. A thing I like to tell my creators a lot is um, you're only as good as your last job. You can do 20 good jobs, but if 21 was bad, people will remember you for 21. So you have to make sure that in the event that, and this is not always the case, in the event that um, a campaign didn't end as, as satisfactorily as you would have wanted, the communication with your client is open, the communication is direct, right? and you are looking for ways to constantly improve and whatever challenges arise as you go, you're able to face them together with the client because your communication channels are open, right? Now, another thing you have to do is when you start um, engaging clients is setting clear expectations. One of the reasons, one of the questions I asked you was how many of you have, been, have done a free campaign without knowing you did a free campaign or the budget wasn't what you thought was coming to you or you didn't communicate tax. All these things happen because we don't have clear, we don't set clear expectations for the campaign. So one of the things you have to do from the very onset of your communication with a client is make sure you understand what your scope is, you understand what your deliverables are, you understand what your timelines are and what budget is set aside for this campaign. Does it work for you given the scope that you have been given? If not, negotiate. Sometimes it's also okay to say no. If you cannot deliver a client project as per scope, please don't say yes and then fail. Because when you fail, you become it becomes harder to get back up because then you're messing with your reputation. So you would rather say no than say yes to a project you can't handle. Make sure you understand exactly what the client is asking you to do and ensure all the communication is happening written. I know we work a lot with WhatsApp, even us with Wowzy, we work a lot with WhatsApp, but one thing Wowzy always do is they follow through with an email or they follow through with um, um, a call or a Zoom, but the comms is always clear and there's something to back it up. The reason I say that is because should you need to refer to what was agreed, as the campaign is going, then you have something written. Either it's a contract or it's an email, but you have something written that then shows you the roadmap. And you need also to be able to communicate these things to the client. How are you going to communicate how uh, the, the, the way in which you deliver the work, right? Is there a schedule? Had they set it out for you or do you have it for yourself? How long is the duration of this campaign so that you're not um, meant to finish on 31st of March, but on the 5th of April, you're still trying to deliver content, right? Um, so moving on, regular check-ins and updates. That's another thing that's um, not sometimes not so fun to do, but very important. You have to make sure that you're constantly checking in with your client to make sure they're satisfied with the quality of your work. They're satisfied with the timelines that you have provided and that you are doing what you said you would do. Is the client happy with the project, right? Because you are banking on them happy to engage you again should this campaign go well, right? So demonstrate your commitment to that project by being proactive. Don't wait for them to call you out for a late deliverable. Go ahead and say, this is late, this is why, this is what I'm doing to make up for it. This is what um, I'll do in the future to make sure this doesn't happen again, right? <clears throat> Foster collaborations with your clients. Again, it's very easy sometimes to feel like they sit 
very far removed from you, but they're, custo they're the custodians of the project. So it's important for you to constantly make sure that you are collaborating with them to make sure that they can give you feedback. You can give them feedback. For example, we normally give our clients feedback if a timeline has taken too long, let's say for an approval for a project, right? We tell our clients, this is taking a little bit long, which is interfering with how we deliver your work. And it's supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be a, a space that is open and honest and that allows for all of you to collaborate and put out good work to achieve the campaign objectives. Um, quality and consistency and value added services. These are things I'm just going to skim, skim through because I know you already, I some of you are already in the space and those who are not, these are things that you you're going to have to build on um, in the future. It's not something that's going to come um, na very naturally in the beginning, but it's something you can build on. Quality and consistency only comes by doing. So you can't do a dog project and shelve it. And I know creatives, you are your harshest critics, but you can't work on something spectacular and then the world never sees it. Put out your work. Some work will not be the best, some work will be viral, but put that quality only comes through consistency. So make sure you're consistently putting out your work. Again, that keeps you visible and believable, right? Value add is um, something I, I sometimes fight with my creators about because I am very big on value add because I understand the importance of making a client feel appreciated or feel um valued for their time right valued for entrusting you with that resource so it's it's not i'm not saying give all your work for free <laughs> no don't give all your work for free what i would want you to do is anticipate what even if it's at the end of the project anticipate what the client may need next or a solution that they may not have thought of and offer it to them right so if they're inviting you for an event um and they were they you're on the campaign you're part of the uh, um, influencers or creators for that campaign, but they hadn't paid you for the event. Go for the event. Go, go for the event. And um, not all of them for free, of course, but the reason I like to ask my creators to attend those events is because once people, even your audience begins to see um, a correlation between the brand and you, it's more believable as opposed to you just waking up in the morning and telling us, use Big, Big is great. I've used Big since I was five. We need to see you using Big, and one of the ways you can do that is by being present at that at, at that client's event. Um, value add can be perceived in many different ways, so you will have to unpack what value add means to you. It can be stories. You've done a campaign. You've done a few reels. They have a thing happening that looks like fun. You can add on stories, right? Figure out where you can add value, and try to give. Um, anybody with a question so far? Uh, no? We actually, there's one question mm -hmm. uh, from an anonymous attendee asking, is randomly sending proposals to agencies going to help? Um, no, randomly no. Um, let me explain why. A lot of times you think um, somebody, let me ask you this. When you receive an email from somebody you don't know, do you pay like a lot of attention? Especially if it's somebody asking you for something. No, right? So that's why I'm asking you to build a network. You can't blindly propose for things. It's also very taxing, right? It's a very taxing strategy. Um, you know what that reminds me of? You know, and I, I know a lot of you are too young to remember this, so please forgive me, my age is showing. Tamaking, where we would go to people's offices with brown envelopes and drop our CVs and find them in the dustbin the next day. That's the kind of work you're signing up for. So no, don't blindly propose. Because also, blindly, what are you proposing for? What what work have you what, what work have you seen there that aligns with your brand that you want to leverage on? The best thing you can do is find your network. Again, I'm going to heavily rely on Kamaru here as my network. Find your network. If it's Wowsy, find Wowsy, build a network with Wowsy, and then begin to do proposals through Wowsy. Those are better targeted because then Wowsy can tell you 
this um, client doesn't want somebody in your in your TA who talks to your target audience. So position for this, this person is talking to your target audience, right? So that's how you should look at proposals. Have I answered your question? You can just put the thumbs up. Okay. Well, I hope it was anonymous, but I think we can move on. Okay, fantastic. So um, I'm moving now to the last three points of my um of my pitch. And these are the ones we neglect the most. And I say neglect, that's why I asked you guys how many people have done campaigns, but then not gone back to a client to find out how the client felt. No follow-up. There's a reason these steps are important. Now, when let me let me remove my corporate hat a bit. When you're getting to know someone. Right. One of the ways you get to know them is by consistently communicating, right? So you won't call them on Monday and then call them again in, in May. You see my point? If you want to build that trust, that um, comfort, that rapport, right? You will consistently keep your communication with this person open. <clears throat> it's the same with your client. Now, over and above pitching with your proposals, your elevator pitch, knowing your why. If you don't build trust with your with your clients, right? Where they see you as a person who's professional, who has integrity, um, who's reliable, then they're going to go with the person who offers those things to them. So it's important for you to consistently build that rapport with your client. Whether they haven't, whether they've given you work in the last five months or four months or three months keep those communication lines open. Say hello, find out how they're doing, send them a piece of content that you've done, um, but keep th those communication lines open because then that, again, keeps you where? Visible, right? And then also be honest about what you're able to do and what you are not able to do. Because a lot of times we've told a client we're not able to do something specific and they've been able to fill that gap. But if you try to do that thing and then you do it badly because you are not able to do it in the first place, then it becomes incredibly difficult for you to gain trust going forward for future campaigns, right? <clears throat> so speak up, build rapport, that will increase, increase your trust and your reliability and will show that you have integrity. Now, client appreciation. I know um, when we're starting out, we don't have big budgets, we're not doing a lot of things, but let me tell you, a simple thank you to the client goes a long way. A simple check-in mid-campaign goes a long way. As if you can, if it's well within your means, um, you know how corporates do uh, client appreciation at the end of the year where they send a little package or a little card or those things are important. They may feel mundane, but those things are incredibly important because then they remind the client that you are also thinking of them, not just the other way around, just not taking, taking, taking. You can give back, appreciate the people who have believed in you and believed in your capability and believed in your work. This is one of the things I try to do consistently with my clients. Even if, <coughs> even if it means um, doing it in batches where you structure it throughout the year so that you can just meet one-on-one -on -one with some of your clients to appreciate them, do that. But that allows you to stay, again, visible, create that rapport and trust, and once these people trust you, right, it will be a very short road between you looking for them for work and them looking for you for work. And the last thing is post-project follow-up. Be honest. I know whenever somebody asks us as creatives for reports, especially after we've done a bomb proposal and we had promised all these things, then you're looking at your follow-through. You're like, ah, I didn't do too great. Be honest, right? Be honest about what was achieved. Be honest about what was um, promised versus what was achieved. And then where necessary or where possible, make sure you're making the necessary steps to talk to these clients and make sure that you're filling those gaps where if I didn't reach the objectives the clients had, then this is how I'm going to make up for, 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 for that uh, shortfall, right? And then maintain communication so that you can stay top of mind for future projects 
and for referrals. And then even with the 57 people on this, um, on this call today, I encourage you to find out who's doing what, um, which space is everybody on this uh, call on, what do they do, network even here. Like, I don't know whether Kamari will give us 10 minutes at the end to just say hi to everyone, but network with every opportunity is an opportunity to network because you never know where your next yes is going to come from, yeah? So take every opportunity you can as an opportunity to position yourself as the best person to be engaged by the brands that you desire to work with. And that's it from me. Kamaru. Yes, I we can, I guess I'm assuming there's a round of applause because we can't hear the <laughs> um but I think now we can have a question and answer. Uh, we can have a virtual a virtual clap. I can see Joel has started. Uh, thank yeah. you for that. It was very insightful. Uh, definitely a lot of pointers to, to take into consideration. So I think we can, I, I'm sure we have, um, we have questions. So, cause we still have some time um anyone who has a question um feel free to ask in the question and answer or you can if you're feeling confident enough and because we are content creators we should be feeling confident enough uh you can give me the opportunity to i can you can raise your hand uh, i can unmute you and you can ask uh, the question so i think we can do that for five five minutes then from there we can move on. So I can see from the chat box the virtual clapping is it's going round. Uh so yes, uh we have one question. Okay. Uh so yes, um the recording will be available on YouTube shortly. Uh, I think it should be available so you'll have this for future reference. Um other questions. Uh, looking at the points given and they're relevant for any business. Okay. Um, what's the channel? It will be available on the Wowzy and EDMI channel. On YouTube, it will be available on YouTube. So ah, uh, here is a question for you. So is have is having several creative skills of benefit, or should you be more specific? Um, can I ask what's the what you mean by many creative skills? Like you're a photographer, and you're also a singer, and you also is that what you mean? Have to wait for the answer. <laughs> okay, let me let me just answer as best as I can. Um, I think in this day and age, knowing how to do many things is a good thing, right? Um, but then you need to be able to focus all that creative energy into one specific under one specific umbrella. Um, and the reason I say that is because, for example, if you're a, if you're a good content creator, but you're also a good editor, but you're also a good graphic designer, those are all tools you can use to then enhance your brand, right? So don't be afraid to use all your, the skills available to you to enhance your brand, but your, port, your portfolio should be concise. It should say, you see like how Stephanie has told us she's a fitness um, she's in. She's a fitness instructor and a coach. She's also an empath. These are the things she does. This is how she does them. That's how you need to arrange your portfolio. Who you are, um, what you do, and how you do it. So your, all your skills will fall in that umbrella. Let me give you my example. I'm a trained psychologist. I also have an MBA in marketing. And I'm a digital, I'm a manager to digital content creators. So I have found a way to make all those skills 
work in the digital content creation space. So that's that's how I would advise you to package um, yourself. Uh, okay, um, then we have quite a number. So uh, there's one here from another anonymous attendee saying, if you worked with the client through an agency, how can you ensure you build rapport and follow through the presented points with the client, especially if you didn't interact with them directly, you only interacted with them through the agency? So this heavily depends on the, on the client. There are some clients who deliberately go through agency because they don't want to have the direct um, access to the creator, which is fine. So it means the person you need to build a rapport with is the agency. Right, because the client trusts the agency. So you will need to build your rapport with the agency, not with the client directly. In some cases, the client wants to be very involved in speaking with the creators directly and having access to the creators. In that case, then you have the opportunity to build that relationship as well. But don't think about it as a this or that, right? Your network can have multiple different people. Just figure out who is the best, who's your first point of contact and who's the best person to interact with for future engagements. And then I'll proceed from there. Um, okay, then I think we can take this one from, it's one boy. Um, when you have a brand you're eager to work with, is it ambitious for you to approach them before you're fully known in that niche or space? Uh, for example, wanting to influence a car brand, when you haven't done it before? Again, I'll tell you this. You can only get two answers, yes or no. So if it's something you feel you are uniquely positioned for, even if you're a smaller brand, there's a reason um, influencers are tiered, right? There's a space for all of us. So don't be afraid to, if you have access to the decision makers, don't be afraid to, to, to try. Work on your proposal seek out a meeting and and say why you do not be afraid to try absolutely not go ahead go ahead and try it then we have one from victor um saying i do run a music distribution company i distribute songs to all streaming platforms i market myself too and it's small the problem i'm having majorly is coming up with a website. I use Google business to market myself and I see it teaches, it reaches a, a smaller market. How can I do, how can I do on that? On starting a website? Yes, yes. If this is not a skill set you already have, um, website development, I know from experience, that there's different, um, what do you call them? There's different different platforms available online that help you to create your own website. So maybe start there. Um, I'll ask Kamaru maybe to add them on. We'll, we'll try and add some links on YouTube um, to see what's possible. I know ADMI have fantastic people who can do this work as well. So maybe reach out to ADMI and they can link you with somebody who a student or a past student who is able to do um, this kind of work, but don't be afraid to try it. I, I mean, if you've already, if you feel you've already exhausted one form of marketing that you're using for yourself, it's 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 well within your right to seek out a new way to market yourself. So go ahead and try. Um, I don't see any problem with that. Then I think uh, we have three more questions. Um, um so one is to you directly is do you train people who aspire to manage artists and that is from Cynthia do I train people who are who want to manage artists uh yes um, uh, people who aspire to manage artists so I haven't done it yet I have mentored maybe one other person in the time I have been in operation. But um, yes, if if that is something you'd be interested in, let's chat. Let's see what's 
um, what's possible. I would definitely be willing to engage. I think for her, it's definitely a good opportunity to start shooting your shots, uh, not just to the brands. <laughs> uh, uh, we have a question from Mudoni. Um, so thanks, Mudoni, for the insightful presentation. Uh, what's your take on building your brand across multiple platforms? Should you take just one platform, e.g. Instagram, and focus on that? Or should you spread it across TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, etc.? If you need to spread it across, do you share the same post or do you have to curate different content for different platforms? Asking as an upcoming content creator, thanks. So that um, will depend. If it's personal content, like it's self-generated content, it's not commissioned by anyone, you can do whatever you want. You can do different content for TikTok. You can do different content for Instagram, different for Facebook. That's completely up to you. But however, if it's content that's been commissioned by a brand, you need to be able to find out what the brand desires to see. Are they looking to have you engage differently on different platforms or are they looking to see their content across all platforms? One thing I've seen done uh, systematically a, a, a lot of in the time I've been here is that normally they want you to cross post. So it's the same piece of content that you then cross up across multiple um platforms but again this goes back to having to listen to what your client needs and what they are asking of you to do what's the scope of the work right because even asking you to develop different content items for different platforms means you're incurring different operational costs for each uh, content piece so are you billing differently for all of those are you making sure that you're covered to not go out of pocket for specific content pieces so just make sure you understand what the, your scope is with a client, but there is no harm in cross-posting your content across all the platforms, but also make sure you watch and see how that content does. They sometimes you post con content cross-posted and you begin to see that it did well, it did better on say Instagram than it did on TikTok. On, on TikTok. Interrogate why to then understand what your audience needs from those from you from those two different platforms and will cross posting work for you or do you need to implement a different strategy? So consistent evaluation of your platforms will also be necessary at that point. Okay, um, and then also I've seen um, for those interested, there's actually a software develop developer who can help you with your websites. Uh, his name is Joshua, you, you guys can chat uh, on the side. So I think we'll just take um just these three more questions and close it because of time. So I'll start with Kerry, uh, who says, I'm sorry I came in late, but I'm starting out in brand management and it's been difficult to get a response from other creators who is the agency behind a certain campaign. Uh, please give a, a few tips. Also still networking by going to events. Um, um, I don't know if there's any tips for that. <laughs> I think you, you have to, this is where I was going back to active listening. You have to keep your ear on the ground. I know sometimes uh, creators may not share all the information they have about a specific product or a brand that they're working with. I think the way to go is to try and highlight or try and interact with people in the agency space. Because then once you know, for example, Wowzy handle Coca-Cola, then you're able to have that conversation directly with Wowzy as opposed to trying to get to Coca-Cola, which might be harder. So um, yes, networking is a fantastic way to do it. But when you're at that networking event, make sure you're looking for the right people to talk to, right? Who are the custodians of the campaign and how can you best um, position yourself to network with them? So I think for the next two, or the last ones, we can bundle them up. Um, so one is, do you think websites are important for content creators? And then um, how does one negotiate rates to get favorable terms, especially if clients use agents who do not want to stick to one's rate card? Let me bust your bubble. Since 2020, no one has stuck to a rate card. <laughs> <laughs> even Kamaru, even Kamaru, yeah, <laughs> and it's That's... not. Um, I, I, 
um, I, I think it's important also to understand that uh, every brand or every individual does what is in their best interest, right? So they're making a business decision. It's not that they don't want to match your rate card. It's not that they don't want to pay you uh, what you want. They have budgets, they have um, calendars, they have all these things they have to factor in when they're dealing with you. Fine, granted, some people will want to, you know, knock you to Niki Doko, but that's, that's rare and far between. I think um, you have to, you have to ask yourself what your acceptable minimum is and whether what is being offered to you is enough to execute the scope of work you've been given. Um, if it's not, then feel free to walk away from the campaign. I know people normally feel like they're going to kill me when I say that, but let me tell you, you know, say no and save your reputation, then say yes and do a bad job. So figure out what your bare min what your acceptable minimums are and then operate in that. So one of the ways you do that is set, set up your costs, right? What are your operational costs? And what's your margin for profit? What do you want to make as profit? And then now once you have that as a base rate, negotiate with that in mind so that then you're also able to position yourself accordingly. Again, you can't go to a brand that's offering 50K for a campaign and expect that they'll give you 350K, right? It's not possible. So how do you make, make sure your costs are met, you have some profit, but you're also willing to negotiate with a client. There's no hard and fast. A contracts and negotiations. This is one thing I learned from my friend, uh, Maji. Contracts and negotiations. Please negotiate fervently for yourself so that Tamaru can hear you when you say what you need. Uh, okay, then lastly is how can I get in touch with you? <laughs> Um, in touch with me personally for yes. for for work. <laughs> so I I guess um... if we if we knew who you are, we could have helped you. But now we don't know who you are. I can't, yes, I can't help you. But you can reach out via DM on my social media. I will always respond. Okay. Um. So I think um. Uh, questions on relevance of websites. I think we can just take that last one on websites. websites and then call it a day. Yeah. I think websites are important depending on what you do, right? Um, let me put this in context. If you have an Instagram page that houses all your content and that's where people come to see your work, what's their motivator to seek, to seek out a website? Unless you have a company or are registered or it's legitimate and you want a professional representation of your body of work, then I don't think it's I, I don't think it's something you should run to immediately. Again, there's no wasted marketing opportunity. None. There's no empty marketing opportunity. You know how they say even bad press is good press. It's the truth. There's no wasted marketing opportunity. So I think one of the things you should ask yourself is if I did have a website, would it increase the number of touch points I have with my client? If your answer is yes, then go for it. Okay, uh, great. I think also because in the essence of time and also not to tire you too much, you know, you're still getting better. Uh, we can release you. Um, I think we'll close uh, today's session uh, there. Um, if not been able to capture your question um, because <laughs> of time, unfortunately, we won't be able to. But please still feel free to reach out to any to ADMI or to Wowzi uh, regarding any of this. Um, I don't know if you have a last parting shot before we call it a day. Anything you'd like to tell us before we call it a day? Um. Maybe don't be afraid, don't be afraid to receive as many no's as necessary to get to your yes. No matter how many proposals, no matter how many elevator pitches, 
don't be afraid of that no so much that you don't try. So, yeah. Okay. Great. And I think that only that applies to everywhere. Maybe you can get a wife that way as well. <laughs> so don't be scared. <laughs> So yeah, I think uh, with those uh, few words, thank you so much, Donny, for this insightful session. I'm sure it's been it'll be beneficial to uh, a majority of us, and we can apply it not only in our content creation but in, across so many other things. Um, the session will be available on YouTube uh, shortly. Uh, thank you so much for everyone who took their time to join this session on your busy schedules and also Donny, thank you so much for taking your time uh, and agreeing to take us through this fantastic uh, webinar. Uh, so I think with no further ado, we'll come to the close of this session. Um, thanks again for joining. I hope it's been insightful for each one of us. Uh, please feel free to reach out to the Wowzy team or to the EDMI team in the case you need any further information or you'd like more webinars or anything. Um, so from my side or from the YOZ side is a big thank you. And yeah, I guess bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for coming.